Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Haku and today I'm going to talk about traditional Japanese tattoos because I've kind of noticed on YouTube there's not a lot of stuff about this and um, it's what I'm passionate about and it's what I do for a living. Uh, so yeah, I'm keen to get stuck into this. It's my first video on this channel so kind of still learning the ins and outs of it but uh, we'll get there. So firstly, I'm just going to kind of talk a little bit about myself and introduce myself. So. Like I did say before, my name is Haku. Um, I'm a tattoo artist from Sydney, Australia, but I have lived and worked in Japan and studied as well. Uh, I did work as a tattoo artist in Japan as well. I lived in a place called Komazawa Daigaku, which is kind of near Shibuya. It's like seven minutes by train. Um, I went to school in Shibuya as well. I went to language school, so I've studied the Japanese language on and off for about three years now um, but I would say the last year consistently um, and when I was going to school in Shibuya I was going full-time um, but yeah I tattoo for a living and I specialize in traditional Japanese tattoos and today I just pretty much wanted to talk about some just some general motifs and uh, just a, like a general knowledge kind of thing about tattoos in Japanese traditional tattoos just because I found that there's not a lot of uh, informative videos out there like you see these there's a lot of ones about Yakuza themselves or like um, just random stuff but it's not very informative so I want to kind of lay down a lot of the information about just basic stuff today and then if you guys really like and enjoy this kind of content um, I can go ahead and specify in certain things like the Yakuza itself or the um, certain names that they give certain techniques or just go into general um, motifs and their meanings and stuff like that but we'll figure that out at a later date I'll probably upload a few videos over the next couple of weeks covering all this sort of stuff anyway so without further ado let's uh, get stuck into it eh? so firstly the uh, traditional style of Japanese tattoos is called irazumi, which uh, literally means to pierce the ink, or to pierce, they say to pierce blue is the same, um, but ire means to insert something, just in general, not just ink, just inserting something in general, and then sumi, or zumi in this case the sound changes, sumi is just the ink that they use. Um, and I guess the to pierce blue saying comes from they used to say that the ink had like a blue tinge to it back in the day um, Sometimes you actually can still notice that but it's very very hard like you look at black ink and gray shade and People are like what it's it's not blue, but um if you see sometimes a Different artist shade next to another like they do look the grays look warmer rather than cool So I guess that's where they got the saying from maybe the ink that they made back in the day had more of a blue tinge in it. So the sumi itself, the ink itself, is um, actually made from like, uh, sumi the word is coal. And um, I'm pretty sure it's just from that, like it's burnt out soot or like something, you know, like burnt out coals. And it's just made into a stick. It's also bound with uh, like animal fats and stuff like that. Um, so it's it's not vegan friendly. Obviously, the, nowadays the newer inks that are coming out, they're not made from any of that stuff. It's vegan friendly, most of it. Um, but yeah, that's how it was made back in the days. Yeah, so the uh, once you have the ink stick, they kind of uh, grind it down. They used to do this all by hand and uh, mix it with water slowly until they had a consistency of how they liked the ink. Um, you just add water over time uh, depending on who the artist is that teaches you they could mix it with X amount of water every half an hour 45 minutes an hour it just purely depends on who you get taught by how they used to do it um, etc and then they would uh, make the needles by hand as well by binding like a bunch of needles in a certain formation uh, to a stick like generally bamboo or like a wooden hand carved stick or something like that and then they would hand poke literally hand poke the ink into the skin um, which is called tabori and tabori is the technique of hand poking 
So the, wo the word uh, tabori also comes from te, mean, just means hand, and then bori, which also the sound changes again from hori. Hori means to carve. Um, so the word tebori is literally hand carve. Um, but the kanji for bori, which comes from the word horishi, which is also what they used to call the tattoo artists back in the day, is a word which, because there literally wasn't a word for tattoo or tattoo artist back then. This is obviously dates from way back when. Um, Horishi was literally just a stone carver or someone that just carved things in general. So they used to just call them Horishi, which is a traditional way of saying a uh, tattoo artist. So I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about uh, general kind of words like Yakuza and you've probably even heard the term Irizumi before, or Tabori, um, Horimono, stuff like that. Horimono is just uh, like pretty much another word for tattoos and sometimes people use that word for like the full body suits. Um, so I'll go, I guess, a little bit in depth more about uh, like the styles of bodysuits. So you have like the Donbori, which is the full suit uh, all the way to the wrists. It cuts off around the neck, uh, which really wasn't that popular to start off with because the Yakuza originally, when they were getting tattooed, they wanted to cover all their tattoos, right? So they were getting the Munawari bodysuits, which is the big gap down the front, which they call the river or Munawari. Um, and they would only get the three quarter sleeves or the half sleeves so that they could still cover everything with their kimono. So Donbori bodysuits, they came into it kind of later when people were kind of just getting a bit more edgy and a bit more, you know, like, um, I guess not giving as much of a shit, pretty much. They were getting rougher, Yakuza started not to care. They were pushing the limits, closing those gaps, pushing the bodysuits higher. You know, sometimes you even see people running around with like full neck tattoos and hands and stuff now in Japan. Um, but yeah, back in those days when it first came about, they tried to keep all their tattoos completely hidden, um, you know, only to the thighs as well, just because that was a dead giveaway that you were in the Mafia back in the day. If you had visible tattoos, so pretty much they kept everything covered. Um, so the full sleeves to the wrists are called Nagasode, which literally just means long sleeve anyway. Um, the half sleeve to chest plate is called a Hikai. And so you could say I, like Munawari is the front panels with the river in the middle but it goes to the hikai or the nagasode um, which again you didn't see that till later even the nagasode the long sleeves that was like really pushing it further the three quarters then the the full um, they slowly just kept adding on to it over time um, but that is another good thing about the traditional style is that the way that it's shaped is you can always extend it later as well. So it's like they always thought about longevity and how to continue on the bodysuits later on anyway, um, in case you did want to later on. Um, it's the same with the full back pieces. They pretty much only went to the back of the thigh and the, th the front. Um, you didn't really see long sleeve legs till later. If you look at some of these early bodysuits, they're quite short. It's It was pretty much all just half sleeves, full back piece, and Munawari. There was nothing else, or not sometimes not even Munawari, just the Hikai, like the chest plates, and that was it. Like these old, these really, really old school bodysuits were really short and really hidden, and you saw that Munawari gap was really, really wide, and then it just got tighter and tighter and tighter over time until people just started completely closing it. You do see a lot of guys, even when they have like the Munawari, they'll um, fill it later on with like, they'll get big kanji down the middle, like a Buddhist prayer or something, like a protection prayer. Uh, they do like the Juzu beads around the neck, which is like a, Juzu beads are like prayer beads, so it's another Buddhist motif. Um, yeah, that, that kind of covers like just a basic knowledge of 
the cuts of the suits and the lengths and stuff like that. And then yeah, just over time they, they were kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. So the name for the half sleeve is also called uh, Gobu, which is 510 or half, literally. So it, it goes to the half sleeve. And then you had the Shichibu, which was seven out of 10, I guess seven parts out of 10, which is the three quarter. So that was pretty much just below the elbow, like to the mid forearm. And then the Nagasote, which is the full sleeve. Uh, so the other thing that they also did in the full sleeves was the Katabori, which is literally like a triangle cut under the arm or sometimes even a circular cut, which I think called the round cut. You don't really see the round cut very often anymore. That's really old school looking. Um, most of the time, you will notice it now that I've said it, if you look at Japanese sleeves a lot or you're always on Instagram searching them up, they're always a big triangle cut out at the bottom of the arm. It's not because they're a pussy or anything, it's actually a traditional cut off, um, which is my favorite part to tattoo as well. I always try to make them look really cool and try something different all the time with the Makiti, like the background shading. Um, it's my favorite part of the whole sleeve. I reckon it kind of makes it, it's really decorative and it looks really neat and cuts it off really nicely. Um, the reason why they used to do that is actually because back in the day, they used to tattoo black bands around criminals' arms. So it was a clear indication that that person had committed a crime and they were a criminal. Now, people, when they started getting tattooed, like the Yakuza, um, they would cover those black bands with the tattoos that they had. And under their arm, they would cover that completely too. So they introduced those shapes so that they could still show that they didn't have a black band there and they weren't trying to cover it up. So they weren't doing anything wrong. Alrighty guys, so I'm going to leave it at that for today. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of information, pretty informative stuff. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed the video. And if you would like to see more stuff like this, please let me know in the comments and stuff like that. Um, if you'd like to know more about me, I can leave my tattoo Instagram in the description below so you can go check out my work. Um, and just let me know in the comments if there's anything that you would like to hear from me like more about like certain motifs or um, if you have any questions or anything like that I can include in future videos. Um, this was just like a general kind of knowledge thing like just to break into it but I can go into like really really big depth of certain subjects later and certain topics and just cover one certain thing in a video rather later. Um, and make a full video out of that or make like a whole series like whatever you guys are keen for I'm keen to um, Keep making these videos and stuff like that. So yeah on that note I'll leave it at that and um, yeah, if you are keen to suss out my work I'll leave that in the description below you can go check out my Instagram give it a follow give some stuff a like that really helps me out um, and yeah, just like and subscribe this video as well because this will help push the channel up and it will keep me motivated to keep making these videos for you guys. So hopefully I see you in the next one and till then, take care, peace out.